abortion on demand in the ninth month of pregnancy, and even executing babies after birth. Executing the baby. Executing the baby. Executing the baby. This is not from Ukraine, but is connected to Russians. In Mali, radical Islamists, presumably local Al-Qaeda cells, attacked the base of the Wagner Group mercenaries and the airfield used by them. Malian officials report that the Wagnerites lost 29 people killed and more than 60 wounded. There are no good guys here on both sides, so both way losses are fine. Historically, Russia imported most of its high-quality bearings from Western manufacturers. For example, in 2020, it imported ball bearings worth more than $419 million, about 55% of which were produced in Europe and North America. All right, guys, uh, obviously giant news, Tucker Carlson fired, uh, Don Lennon fired. I'd say at uh, MSNBC, somebody better watch themselves. But actually, uh, the head of NBC News was fired just a couple of days ago. So apparently it comes in threes. Leaving the network effective immediately. Also today, CNN host Don Lemon tweeted he'd been fired after 17 years. And NBC Universal CEO Jeff Schell was let go Sunday. Carlson, as you well know, he gave no indication at the end of his show on Friday that he'd be leaving. And the network was running promos for his show today. He did have no idea this was coming. He thought he'd be back at work today. So did his top producer. His top producer was also terminated today. My sense is it is related to the Dominion lawsuit in the following way. For all the messages that were emerging publicly, like Tucker Carlson calling Trump a demonic force and a destroyer, there's so much more that Dominion and Fox was able to read from Carlson's phone privately that was never seen in public, that was redacted. And there's actually hundreds and hundreds of pages of redactions that's a part of the public record with the court. So whatever Carlson was saying privately, whatever he was texting that's been redacted by Fox, that's probably what led to his ouster. Now, there's also a pending lawsuit from a former Fox producer who's accused Tucker Carlson of having a misogynistic, sexist workplace, put all that together, and there was ample reason to remove him from his show. It looks like Tucker Carlson was trying to get fired. Now, on Tucker, it's a complete opposite. He's patient zero at Fox News. He's the one that does the most lies, the most conspiracy theories, etc. And the one behind the scenes cost Fox News a ton of money in that Dominion lawsuit by saying, well, this is obvious BS, where these, the people we're showing on air are nuts and insane, uh, but he does it anyway. And then he goes and doubles down with Donald Trump and does an interview where they spread more election lies, especially as the Smartmatic case is coming up. Don't forget, Dominion was not the end. Smartmatic is now going to sue them for $2.7 billion, more than Dominion even sued them. There's some are speculating that uh, Tucker Carlson getting fired was part of the Dominion settlement. That would be kind of amazing. I would be very surprised by that. But Tucker has been going more and more populist to try to goad Fox News into firing him. Why? Well, my speculation has been throughout, and Young Turks viewers know this from now years ago, uh, is that I think Tucker Carlson was pushing Fox News to get fired so he could run as a populist candidate for president. 2024 is not over, guys. There's a lot of people that can still get in the race. Uh, this comes uh, quickly enough for Tucker Carlson that he might even make a run here. And the whole idea behind this is Fox News wouldn't let me say the truth. Oh, that's catnip. That's populist catnip for the right wing. So him being the leading conspiracy theorist, the leading guy who's driving the crazies, the patient zero at Fox News, that puts him in perfect political position, unfortunately. OK, Ben Micellis from the Midas Touch Network, and this is a breaking news alert. Fulton County District Attorney Fawny Willis says that she will announce potential criminal indictments of Donald Trump and or other criminal co-conspirators of Donald Trump between July 11th and September 1st. Fulton County, Georgia District Attorney Phony Willis revealed this timetable in a letter to local law enforcement in which she asked them to be ready for, quote, heightened security and preparedness, end quote, because she predicted her announcement, quote, may provoke a significant public reaction, end quote. There is a hole at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean and this hole is leaking water upwards, not ocean water, but warm water, at least nine degrees warmer compared to the ocean water. How did researchers find this tiny hole in the vast floor of one of the world's biggest oceans? Well, the signs were first picked up by a ship sonar, which found unexpected bubbles beneath the ocean's surface. Initially, they believed this could be methane bubbles. But upon observation, researchers realized what was leaking wasn't methane or warm water, but tectonic lubricant. And it was coming from the Cascadia Mega Thrust. What's that, you ask? Well, it's a boundary between two of the Earth's tectonic plates, the Juan de Fuca tectonic plate and the North American tectonic plate. It just happens that the hole lies in the Cascada subduction zone. I'm getting a little technical out here, but that's a fault line between Northern California and the Vancouver Island. Where exactly is it located? Just 80 kilometers off the Oregon coast. It's not that far from the coast of America, not that far from Canada either. It's the first known leak of its kind. Scientists have not ruled out the possibility of more such leaks nearby. But here's what's scary, and this is why we have to monitor this really closely, is the thought of what happens next. Scientists explain that the loss of fluid could lower the fluid pressure between the two tectonic plates, and this could cause friction and stress, and that could result in a massive earthquake. A nine magnitude earthquake is what some people have said is possible. Now that's a quake so strong that, you know, entire communities near that entire epicenter could be, could be destroyed. There could be, this is a Pacific Ocean, so you could have a tsunami. It could trigger a massive tsunami and affect the entire coastal areas. Countries on the coast of the Pacific Ocean could be seriously affected by this. Clarence Thomas isn't the only Supreme Court justice in the hot seat for profiting on undisclosed side deals. Neil Gorsuch just got exposed for doing a deal with the CEO of my former law firm. Welcome to TYT's Overruled. I'm your legal analyst, Adrian Lawrence.
For two years, Supreme Court Justice Neil Gorsuch tried to sell a 40-acre tract of land in rural Colorado, which he originally listed for just under $2.5 million in 2015. But Gorsuch had no luck finding a buyer. That was until he was elevated to the high court in April 2017. This for Politico. Nine days after, he was confirmed by the Senate for a lifetime appointment on the Supreme Court. The then Circuit Court Judge got a buyer, the chief executive of Greenberg Traurig, one of the nation's biggest law firms with a robust practice before the high court. Gorsuch owned the property with two other individuals. This is an abomination before God. We cannot remain silent. God is going to judge us for our silence. It is imperative that we as Christians make sure that we, number one, that we recruit strong, committed believers that are going to govern according to the word of God to every position in government. And let me start with the two most important, school board and city council. Yeah. All politics is local. Our children are being destroyed for lack of knowledge. They're being destroyed with all this evil that is being so pervasive in our schools and is coming from the very top of this administration. The only evil is what's not being taught. I looked at my little cousin's history book the other day, and do you know they don't call it the Trail of Tears anymore? They wrote that the natives agreed to move and give the land to the white settlers. When this administration is telling teachers, when those children are in your classroom, they belong to you, they don't belong to the parents. That's an abomination. And when they are telling the school board administrators, you need to help the teachers to assist the children in gender transition without telling the parents. I say, no, no, my watch. And you should say the same thing. We need to stand and we need to move forward and we need to retake America. Forget this statement, God is in control. No, God has given you and I a stewardship responsibility into this country. Let us be salt and light, and let's take this country back to the glory of God. Oof, these are good. Let's read these. The civil rights of none shall be abridged on account of religious belief or worship. I like that one. Religious bondage shackles and debilitates the mind and unfits it for every noble enterprise. Oof, that one's good too. Let's see. The United States is not a Christian nation any more than it is a Jewish or a Mohammedan nation. John Adams, nice, nice. Hmm. Christianity neither is nor ever was a part of the common law. Thomas Jefferson. So what is this made up imaginary past that you're referencing? Oh, it's a lie. It's a lie. That's what they do. They lie. He's lying about it. Thank you so much for watching. Just remember, Christianity itself isn't bad, but the people who lie about it are. I'll catch you in the next video. Thank you. Yeah, that's fine. Holy When I got, first got here and everybody canceled me, Matt, you know how badly they canceled me. Tucker Carlson was the only one that would bring me on and, and actually talk to me and, and ask me questions. He had me on his, on his show on Fox Nation. He brought me on Tucker Carlson tonight. He was the only person that would talk to me. And then I heard this morning on Fox and Friends, I was watching it. They never had me on anyway, so I can talk about him. Tucker's going to have more success, more money, and more influence uh, in an independent lane. I mean, you know, look at Joe Rogan. He, he's, Joe Rogan's audience dwarfs anything that's on cable news right now, and Tucker could rival him. So I think, and he'll make more money uh, in the independent lane, too. It'll all go in his pocket as opposed to in Rupert's. That tells you a very clear message. If a media outlet refuses to follow the government-approved narrative, they will be destroyed. Real questions will not be tolerated. This is exactly why I started. You know, if you think about 70 million people being aborted over the last uh, 49 years, uh, soon to half and half, men, women, 35 million workers, uh, 70 million not in the workforce, they have a child, two children. We've got somewhere between 100, 140 million people that have not worked 
that are not with us because of the, uh, the Roe v. Wade issue. And so, you know, we've taken away the very workforce that was needed to supply both Social Security and Medicare. Access to reproductive health care, including abortion, helped lead to increased labor force participation. It enabled uh, many women to finish school. That increased their earning potential. It allowed women to plan and balance their families and careers. I think framing it in the context of labor force participation is... It just feels calloused to me. If we really want to talk about the debt and spending, it's the entitlements program that's 70% of our entire budget. Uh, the top Democrats don't want a debate with uh, Joe on the stage. I saw yesterday that Donald Trump uh, on True Social said, I see that everybody's talking about the Republican debates, but nobody got my approval or the approval of the campaign, uh, Trump campaign before announcing them. Did you talk to him about the debates? Is he in or is this just what he does? He, he did this in 2016. Working the refs. Every campaign and every candidate is going to have to make a decision. Do I want to participate? He's going to have to make that decision. I think he'll do it. And President Trump never shies away from a debate. Uh, and he yes, did he very does. well on debate. They did 2020. Right. He does. He, he skipped hours. He skipped hours in 2016. People knew the lengths Donald Trump's allies planned to go on January 6th as Cruz was planning out a key part of the plot. I think that the country deserves to have a, a credible assessment of these claims and what the evidence shows. And mechanism to try to force that is denying certification on the 6th. Forcing this reassessment, as he so dryly put it, of Biden's actual win was for Cruz one step in a larger coup plot. He's just talking to someone who he sees as an ally in this cause, Maria Bartiromo, in advance about overthrowing the race with this fake commission and using the claims of fraud, which, remember, on tape, Ted Cruz said, were not standing up in court. Who's deciding who gets inaugurated? He gets the results of that commission and what they find. And if they found credible evidence of fraud that undermines confidence in the electoral results in any given state, they would report on that. He admits it. You heard the question there. So who decides who gets inaugurated? That's what this is all about, because you have a certified winner. You have all of the courts having passed up any potential challenge to that. So at that point, it was President-elect Biden. And Cruz answers that this fake, made-up, so-called commission that he and his Trump buddies were planning to try to create to bureaucratize a coup. That's what they were trying to do. That was his answer. That's how they would steal the race. Ted Cruz goes on with more of his effort to paint lipstick on this pig. As we were looking at this January 6th certification, all of the options that were being discussed uh, were problematic. And, and so I wanted to find a path that was consistent with the Constitution, consistent with the law, and, and that address these very real, real serious claims. Tucker Carlson is out at Fox News. Couldn't have happened to a better guy. Oh, that's gonna hurt! What I will say, though, is while I'm very glad that the person that was arguably responsible for the some of the largest driving, some of the most uh, amounts of death threats and violent threats, not just to my office, but to plenty of people across the country, um, I also kind of feel like I'm like waiting for the cutscene at the end of a Marvel movie after all the credits have rolled. And then you see like the villain's like hand reemerge out to grip, grip over like the end of a building or something. But deplatforming works and it is important. And um, there you go. Good things can happen. Today I am announcing that I am a candidate for president of the United States. This campaign is about courage. It is about making the tough decisions to rebuild our economy, to give peace a chance through America's strength, and to renew the American spirit of freedom, opportunity, and the rule of law. I am the only candidate running for president with a breadth of experience in law enforcement. I will enforce the law and demand that local prosecutors do the same. As a text that came out revealed my suspicions, um, he was looking for ratings fate, purely, uh, and was also looking for power. It was a combination of ratings and power and manipulating the audience um, and manipulating also the political system. There was an aspect of, I can pick who the House Speaker is, I can pick who the President of the United States is, or who the Republican candidate is going to be. And I thought that was really dangerous and didn't want that kind of power. I didn't want to have um, Senate candidates calling me and being very upset, are you going to destroy our whole campaign tonight? Because he could do that, and he would call and tell them that. But if you don't participate or you don't come on the show, we will destroy you. I think we can all easily agree upon the fact that no TV show, news, or opinion should have that much power over elected officials in this country. Yeah. Yeah, should I do it? Uh, I'm going to do it. Uh, Big news of the week, Fox fired Tucker Carlson. Um, Fox has gone left. They've gone woke. Uh, we're, we're clearly calling them out for it. Tucker is a great voice for conservatives across the country. He doesn't have the platform anymore. Will you weigh in on Fox's decision to fire probably one of the more conservative voices, most important voices in America? Absolutely. I think it was devastating to our First Amendment, Eric. I see it as a very serious problem. What we're seeing is we're seeing the end of the First Amendment. This week, we also saw a, a seismic shift for the most powerful conservative platform in the country. The primetime host Tucker Carlson was fired from Fox. David, what does his ouster mean for the network and for those millions of folks who tuned in to watch him every night? Well, Fox is an entertainment network, but it's also a company. <laughs> uh, and executives don't like it when you annoy them over and over and over again. And one has a sense that Tucker was sending emails, he was internal fights, squabbles, he was going further than they were comfortable with. And there's one thing we know about Fox is Fox is bigger than any person on Fox. And so they got rid of 
Bill O'Reilly, they got rid of Megyn Kelly, they, they will get rid of you if you are, try to think you're bigger than Fox. And so they did it. It was a very bold move. Their viewership has fallen in half. Uh, and so, it, you know, I was shocked by it. I, I thought they'd never do it. But um, Tucker has, he is, has built, successfully built a very successful thing at doing what he does. And uh, they decided business over pleasure. <laughs> Were you shocked by the decision? Um, I was shocked simply because, you know, you get to the level of Tucker Carlson or O'Reilly, you think they're untouchable, until which time the company says um, you are more of a liability than, you know, we care to deal with. W what I'm wondering, though, is... What impact will Tucker's firing and disappearance from Fox have on the Republican Party? Mm -hmm. Will they stand on their own, however many feet they have, and start articulating a vision for their party and for the country that is independent of Tucker Carlson and, and Fox? And I don't know if they even know how to do that anymore. Dr. Verma? Senator Kennedy, so I'm the one person, one doctor in this room that does provide abortion care, and I can tell you that does not reflect the reality of no, abortion I'm, care. I understand. I'm just it asking just, a question. It simply doesn't But do happen. you support it? There, there are bills before Congress that will allow that to happen. You don't support it, or are you going to be a so no, again, answer my the, question? As the doctor in this room who does provide abortion care, that is not how abortion care in this country works. It's a hypothetical that does a disservice to our But if a patient came patient, to you and said, uh, I, I'm going to probably have a baby this week and I've changed my mind and I would like you, doctor, to abort the child, would you do it? That is not how abortion care in but this if, country works. But if works. a patient did, would you do it? My job as a doctor is to look at each okay. individual situation. I mean, I'm I sorry, never, I don't mean to be rude, but I can tell neither you nor the press, professor will answer my question. I, and I think you both have an opinion and I don't understand why you won't share it. I We're going to solve provided, this problem. I've doctor, provided care doctor, for a few years and you? I've never Could seen that situation. Executing the baby. Anti-abortion measures are so unpopular, Republicans in the House actually invented something popular sounding that they could vote on. They created a bill to outlaw something totally made up. It is called the Born Alive Abortion Survivors Protection Act. It makes it a crime for doctors to murder babies that are born alive during an abortion, which, if it were something that happened, would be very much already covered under existing laws against, you know, murder. This is a perfect example of why politicians should not be making medical decisions, is because we are literally making stuff up and writing laws about it at this exact moment. Um, a child does not come out part way alive and then doctors kill it. That's not a thing. That's Executing. not a thing today. It's not a thing tomorrow. Maybe. It's not a thing 10 years ago. It's not a thing. So for us to legislate things that don't exist in real life, again, perfect example of why politicians should not practice health care. But the thing is, by and large, the Republicans who are pushing these bills Executing know that this is not a the thing. Baby. They know that they're lying. They just don't care. The goal is to push a narrative. The goal is to lie to the constituents to try to get them on their side, which is why we need to do what Republican Congress people will not actually listen to the doctors executing the baby